Welcome to the Bagel Logic Podcast, the show where Papa Tom spreads wisdom like a schmear of cream cheese on an everything bagel. Here's your host, Tom Jennings. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Bagel Logic Podcast. I'm your host, Tom Jennings, and this is only the second time in the history of Bagel Logic we have a, a guest that's live and in person in. I don't really have a name for the studio. You want to come up with one, Josh? Yeah, I don't know on the spot like that, man. It's, <laughs> it's important stuff. It's yeah. something that will have to stick with the studio for the rest of its life, so you want to make sure good one yeah we got uh and we got all kinds of stuff going on we have the the dogs already met the dogs they're barking and uh we the neighbor is having siding put on so they're they're (laughs) they're banging on it now i'll tell you a funny story before i introduce josh as i was out this morning with my dogs and uh, they were doing what dogs do in the backyard which is sniff for an hour and pee for a second (laughs) and uh so that so the two neighbors are talking and they're literally like talking shit about one of my relatives and i'm just like oh my god this is horrible but of course i listened intently well, how could he not yes absolutely <laughs> yeah it was a weird situation but anyhow my guest today josh kogovan 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 whatever you like i like I kogovan think, yeah sounds cooler it sounds like a french dish like uh, i would like a uh, 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 beef on wick and a kogovan this, you yeah. know so, uh, but Josh and I, we, we met through A10 Meadworks, which is a place that I mentioned very often. It's a place that I bartend on Saturdays, but more importantly, they host live music. And that's really my connection to the, to the place. You know, we, we started out, uh, I started out with the owner booking music acts. And in the early days, there was only one act <laughs> that the owner booked himself and said, I will take care of. And that was a group called Experimental Sandwich Sets, Josh's group. And you guys have a presence online, I assume, right? Kinda. We have one, or we had one, maybe would be the better way to put it. I guess, yeah. Like, you can find us on YouTube. There's a bunch of stuff. Google. If you Google us, we're there. Facebook, though, somebody stole. Somebody stole our Facebook. Really? Yeah. We worked worked really hard. I'm not even going to give them a plug right now and mention the company that stole it, but... Well, All of our pictures are still on there, so I thought about maybe just calling ourselves that. We could send people to that page, the videos, and weird you report it to facebook and they don't do anything about it yeah well you know it's um i guess it's a good launching point because choosing a name of a band is always interesting (laughs) one of the hardest parts about having a band let's face it experimental sandwich is a great name though is i mean i think it's i think it kind of captures your vibe which is very experimental in nature i mean you're not one of those groups that you could put into a box in terms of genre i suppose the closest would be like jam band electronica and uh bossa nova (laughs) maybe maybe it's hard we like everything we like to keep an open mind so yeah we try to do it all which can be not great for your musical career Yeah, I but mean, it, it, it's I mean, it's fun. It's, it's going to be frustrating about. too, though. Like you said, I mean, the first, but again, the first thing is, I mean, if you don't pick, you don't pick the right name, then you're already starting out in a hole. Yeah, yeah, it's not a good way to start with a bad name. But if you're a good band, you're still going to prevail. There's plenty of shitty band names out there that of bands that have made it right. I don't, I can't really think of any off the top of my sticks. head. But there's got to be. Oh, don't be beating on sticks. See, see there's <laughs> he sees all the stick stuff all around. Uh, yeah, all right. Uh, it's a weird name. I'm just saying. It's, that's kind of like yeah. I don't know the story behind it. Maybe you do. You know a lot about the band. Well, but. I do. Styx is S-T-Y-X. Now, my dad used to call them Stinks because he, he hated their music so much yeah, when I was a kid. Your old man might have got along pretty well. Yeah, in terms of your, <laughs> your shit talking about They're not Styx. horrible. They're a great band. It's just so, not my kind of thing. So it's S-T-Y-X, which is the river Styx. It's a mythological river in Hades. And, you know, it's, they, a lot of people thought they were satanic because of the name and all that kind of stuff. Well, but, uh, right as soon as you hear the music, you know, that's not the case. <laughs> babe i'm leaving to hell. <laughs> but uh so so then uh so it was a, just last week at work some guy we were talking i said ah, what kind of music do you like and of course i'm old and they're all young and the he goes oh, man i really like this band called stick and i'm like stick singular i'm like i'm thinking oh, is man. it stick figure you know he's like yeah. you, know, you know stick i mean come sail away i'm like oh that's sticks <laughs> so <laughs> So yes, yeah, nothing like that to make <laughs> like make that. you feel old. There, it's my ver- my very first concert. I love those guys so. Uh, but it's amazing how many people just kind of beat on sticks. But it's it's not a horrible name. I mean, I think there's some bland names out there like Boston. You know, so, sure. But, um, but who did who? I mean, when you think about, it, we were just talking about that before we got on air. I mean, how much of a coup is that 
to just grab the name of a city. I mean, somebody must have been sitting around going, like, what do we call ourselves? Well, there's a Chicago. We're from Boston. <laughs> we'll call ourselves Boston. <laughs> oh, man. I think uh, one rocks way more than the other. Chicago, yeah. Boston, but... So we're, so we're now experimental sandwiches from Medina, right? I guess, yeah. Most of us are. So did you ever just think a name of the band Medina? I didn't, but it would have been a lot easier, and I kind of <laughs> wish I would have thought of that. Oh, just man. another band out of Medina. Uh, we could have done something with that. Yeah, something. It's already popular. It's already like getting hits on the internet or whatever, people looking it up. Maybe they would mess up and look up your band name instead of the town name. I don't but, know. It could work out. Well, of course, Medina, though, then you get Medina, which is uh, Medina, Medina. People don't know how to pronounce it. Plus, it has something to do with some Tone holy Loke. site, too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Funky cold Medina. <laughs> yeah. That's what I think of all the time. When all I, kinds of problems. Yeah. I mean, Boston, people just think of cream pie and drunken Irishmen. So right. that's, uh, it's a little bit easier to market. So so to band dynamics, I, I know I discussed this with some other people over the years and I don't know what your experience has been like, but I, aside from playing with my kids who, you know, I kind of have to still love them after I hate playing with them. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just wondering oh, if you've had similar experiences in terms of just trying to find that special combination of guys that, that can express themselves creatively and yet not want to kill themselves after 20 minutes of rehearsal. Definitely. It's, it's a thing like, when the band started, everything flowed and went and moved and was easy, kind of. We had some issues in the band, maybe, with a couple of guys not showing up or whatever it happened to be, and we ended up getting a new drummer and a new bass player, and you try to do the old stuff, and it just doesn't click the same. That's when you realize it's a little too late then because you've already switched members and stuff, but uh, at the end of the day, dynamic is a thing, and if you all can't get along, then probably not going to work out too well. And I think for us, uh, we found that, and now we're kind of back together again. It's the same shit, but we're back together, and we have fun doing it, and maybe maybe sometimes it's not so reliable. Yeah. That's the I, thing for us, like the reliability factor and being able to schedule and get together with life being in the way. That's our hardest thing to deal with, and if that's the hardest thing to deal with, I think you're doing all right. We can stand each other. We can be in a room together and play, and we get along on that aspect every time we can agree there yeah i always i tell people i said if it's not fun at some point you just got to stop doing it it's you know? literally the key yeah. yeah well it's like that with everything i mean i mean i mean i make bagels you know it's like there's sometimes it's just not fun if at it's least, not fun then it's work yeah then it's and, work and that, then you got to get paid no for good. it and then if you're right. then if you're doing it and you're not getting paid for it then it just becomes it's tough a pain in the ass Absolutely. is what it is yeah. then i should just be putting up siding because this guy next door yeah. is clearly doing well i did that for a little while yeah they, it's it's fun work when it's 100 degrees out you know did you like talk shit below. about the relatives of the neighbor that you while you were playing <laughs> Not knowingly, <laughs> did you did you go over and tell him? Be like, hey, that's my uncle you're talking about, or whoever it was. Oh, well, I can't I can't reveal which family member it is because we're in the off chance that somebody in the family is actually listening, you know. And uh, but that's you know that's the weird thing too is when you live in a small town and, and and I mean even going back to the band and you know how you and I know each other and how you know when you live in sort of a big city. I think I think of John Lennon sometimes. He lived in New York City and he always used to say he loved living there because on some level. He could have a little bit of an anonymity. Oh, I hate that anonymity. You know the word anonymity. That's the one. <laughs> anonymity. Yeah. I, I know my anonymity. <laughs> It, it, but you don't have that in a small town, which is good and bad. I mean, obviously, when things are 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 bad and you need help, I mean, small towns really do tend to come together. But when it comes to the you know the gossip and all that stuff, it can be very very frustrating i'm sure that you've had to live that on many levels at some point unless you've lived in a a bubble that i don't know about i think you try as much as you can i try as much as i can to just come kind of a personal kind of person don't put my my personal business out there i try to keep home home and and whatever but yeah whether you like it or not people are going to find out about stuff when you live in a small tiny little town can't help it yeah just the way it is yeah and i mean uh, i mean you, did you grow up in medina weird born in medina raised in the area if that makes any sense <laughs> so i went to medina school for a little bit as a kid 1982 let's take it way back to 1982 when i was born in medina hung out there for a bit mom and dad broke up broken home i guess kind of whatever yeah. you want to call it didn't seem broken but when you're used to just that being life then it is what it is but 
moved around a bunch, went to Albion School, which isn't very far from Medina, and went to Lindenville School, which isn't very far from Medina, but we bounced around a lot when I was a kid. So I think that's how I got to know a lot of people in the area. So it seemed like a bad thing back then, but so not, now so not so bad. Orleans County, just for people that, that don't know, it's a very small rural. I mean, the whole the population is around 40,000. So it's not a, it's not a, it's, it's, it's a very, it's a very rural setting. You know, like my kids, they, they couldn't wait to get the hell out of there. Like they just didn't feel like they fit in on some level. And, and I, in some ways that's a little depressing, but it's also understandable. I mean, what's your relationship with with the area? I mean, it. I mean, you're a little. I mean, how old are you? You're forty. You're forty. 40 so now, yeah. you're kind of like. I just moved a year ago out of Orleans County. I was there for twenty some odd years, and I felt like it was a love hate relationship. I at least am connected there through employment and through other things and whatnot. But, I mean, do you feel on some level trapped there, or do you have, have you have you just embraced the area as as your home and and part of your identity? I love this place and the area. I think it's a great place. Uh, a lot of people might disagree, but uh, there are there are shitty people everywhere you go. And if you don't like where you are, move. How hard is that? I don't feel like it's a hard concept. If you want to go, go. That's all you got to do is make it happen. I like it here, except for in the winter. Winter time, it sucks. I'd like to go somewhere warm in the winter and then just come back. I think I'll stay here the rest of my life, though, probably. I dig it. Small town's fun. You know, well, know everybody. Good. You know what's going on. You've known everybody your whole life. You know what's going on. You know what to expect, I guess, kind of on some sort of level, but... It's good. I like I like small town living. So, to so your wife, how'd you meet your wife? I'm just curious. Yeah, Twenty years. Twenty years ago, we got together. But actually, funny enough, first grade. First grade is where we met. We were in the same first grade classroom together, and then our lives kind of both went their separate directions until we were older, seventeen, eighteen, and then we reconnected, and we've been together since we we're eighteen years old. We got a nineteen year old kid. We're not married. We haven't involved the government yet, but uh, probably due to just being too busy and not having the finances, I guess, more than anything. Yeah, 20 years of pretty good relationship. At the end of the day, our son has pretty severe autism, so it's kind of brought us closer together. I feel like with a lot of relationships, it does the opposite and kind of drives mm. people apart. It's been the one thing we know. We both know how each other feel when it comes to that, so it's kind of cool to be able to have that significant other there that's been through the same things you have. I think that's helped us along the way and we still love each other and i love hanging out with her i've heard you say that on a couple of podcasts like, i like hanging out with my wife it's weird when <laughs> when there's gonna be a guy's night or a girl's night and you're like well but why <laughs> yeah it, i enjoy it, bringing my significant other and i promise she won't be a problem i don't know <laughs> like i don't understand it and it works the same way for girls night she's kind of like well but why you know we spend all of our time together constantly so it's weird there's a time and a place for that, I think. But I, but, I, agree. But I think if you get to the if you get to the point in your relationship where you quote unquote need a guy's night out, yeah, or you, you want it, yeah, or you want it, relationship, <laughs> it just that just that's just an indicator that the relationship yeah. ain't working. I, right. See, I didn't know you guys weren't married. That's why I used nope. the term wife. So, no, that's I think common law or something. Eighteen years or something, maybe right? common law. But I will <laughs> I will give a uh, I will give a pitch since I have not monetized this podcast yet. Uh, Anybody out there looking to get married, including you, Josh, uh, I am an officiant. So how <laughs> badass would that be if we did a Bagel Logic live marriage <laughs> on air? <laughs> Putting me on the spot here, huh? I'm just saying yeah, well, that would, would be pretty cool. I would have to obviously cool. talk to her first about that. That would, I don't know. That would absolutely help the ratings. She is a huge fan. We listen together yeah. a lot of the times. We're driving our son to school and we listen to these episodes of Bagel Logic. So yeah. she enjoys it. Yeah, we well, both good. enjoy it. It's good stuff. You're easy to listen to. Got the got the yeah. voice for the radio, Tom. And then not the face, but <laughs> <laughs> you got the face for Santa Claus at at, at, uh, at the mall. It's oh, like man. it's like imagine Santa Claus at the mall, but with a really good radio voice. That silky that's... smooth voice. <laughs> I mean, hey, that's a pretty good combo. You could probably do good during Christmas time. Have Something, you tried? Yeah. yeah. But uh, I don't them guys get paid. So back to your son. I know you know we've had conversations about your son. Obviously, I work with students with special needs, and yeah. uh, I mean it's it's a challenge, like you said, especially autism and, and spectrum disorders, as they call it. Uh, of all the diagnoses that I work with, that is the one that is just it's it seems to me so. I'm trying to figure out a way to put it where the it makes spectrum that, is broad. With yeah, that. it's very paradoxical because I think on some levels that it it feels like it's really hard to have an emotional connection to a kid that has uh, autism or Asperger's. 
but yet on some level it's easier which doesn't make a damn bit of sense it doesn't <laughs> but good. it but that's how it is you know i yeah. feel like people that work with students on the spectrum it at first it's like oh god this is just horrific and then the, but then there just comes this moment of like wow man like this is there's something here that that is pretty unique and kind of special and maybe in yeah. some ways i feel like people on the spectrum have got it more together than we do because my kids tell me I'm a touch hole. You know, I take things so personally and I'm so super sensitive. And some of these kids I've got even that know. problem too. You know, you know but, but, so you know what I'm talking about. Well, yeah. with these kids, they tend to, to bottle it up and bam, it blows up. And then then they're back to normal. Yeah. And you almost envy that think, in some ways. Yeah, once again, just a, it's weird. We and my wife talk or girlfriend, whatever you want to call her, fiance. Uh, possible wife, possible Q, person of partner. same living color or living <laughs> living quarters living color My baby's That's mama uh, yeah. whatever you want to call it but either way the spectrum is way it's big it's so big that it can make it hard because you'll have people who meet a certain group of maybe autistic kids that are a little higher functioning they can talk and they can kind of understand and move and then you got the whole other end of the spectrum where there's like motor skill problems and nonverbal and just the list goes on with aggression and all that stuff that can never stop with some kids where some kids can control it sometimes and some kids can't. And then there's the group of kids who are eccentric and can play the piano at the age of 10 and all that stuff too. It can get confusing. You know, you, you turn on Good Morning America and you see the kids who can do the good stuff, uh, whatever, mathematics or whatever they're a savant at. Seems to me, for the most part, like when I go to my kid's school to, for an event or all th through the years, there's not a lot of that savant stuff going on. It's really good to hear about on the news, and I'm not bagging on the kids who can do that kind of stuff because it's fantastic that they have that in their life. Most autistic kids, though, are on the other end of the spectrum where it's just not a gift at all to have to deal with not being able to control your emotions and not being able to talk you know, and having trouble with your motor skills and all that stuff. The list goes on and on and on. Stuff that you can be allergic to and foods you can eat and foods you can't eat. It just goes on and on. We don't hear about that, though. So I think that's where the separation or the less is like the, it's not understanding. People don't understand that because they don't see it. So you can't really blame them for not understanding something that there's not really any emphasis put on it. So nobody hears about the bad stuff. It's hard to watch. You know? Yeah. So I get it but it's not entertaining really <laughs> yeah you know it's at the so same big. time it would do a lot of good if if more people understood what it could yeah. really be like well I, I you know it's it's funny as i'm just sitting here listening to you and and thinking myself like my first exposure to autism was rain man dustin hoffman which i don't think is unusual i mean it's probably not as iconic a movie movie to your generation i know or it. younger I know but, it well. but a lot of people yeah. know it yeah but but that again the the premise of that movie well first of all you have an actor that's not on the spectrum mimicking somebody that's on the spectrum mm -hmm. and I'm not picking on Dustin Hoffman he's one of my favorite actors uh, you you may hate him as much as you hate sticks I don't no, know no not but... at all great actor great actor <laughs> I don't hate sticks either for the I know, record I'm just kidding just not my cup so, of tea I stopped uh, saying I hate bands a long time ago all right because you get older and you start liking them and then you got to eat your words so. So, uh, and Never words know. are, words are awful tasting. So yeah. I will say that <laughs> unless it's alphabets, but, um, but you know, back to the very serious topic that, that you're right. It just is one of those things that just doesn't seem to be on people's radar is it goes back to that, you know, yeah, the good morning America is the rain man's the, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just, they, they, there's this expectation like, Oh, you know, well, every one of these, kids with autism i mean you just peel back the onions and and it turns out that they could they could write beethoven's fifth backwards and twice you know right. and without even thinking about it so that's and it's it's weird in the sense that i feel like it's a justification to some people to say that oh you know these people are worthy because they have this quote unquote special talent but mm -hmm. i mean the reality is is that all of us have some we have some talent maybe it's special maybe it's not but yeah that's we're not all perfect matter I mean, of it, opinion it's, right <laughs> yeah but but it, it it does i think set up this weird expectation for people in society and i i, I you know going coming back a little bit to it so i was listening to a podcast because i love podcasts clearly about a person who was accused of killing his parents and they were on the spectrum and because of them being on the spectrum, the way that they handled a police interrogation would be very different than anyone else. 
but it goes back to that misunderstanding like well clearly you know the this is that that you know can't be that bad because even though he's he's a little socially awkward i mean i'm sure he can remember every name in the phone book you know yeah. and it, and it's uh and that's so helpful yeah <laughs> so helpful but even the nonverbal stuff you know it's like everybody's looking for the nonverbal kid to be able to to play the cello or something and yeah, that's and, a, a, a big step my son is nonverbal he's never really said anything he has tried to say mom so like and he's, he works his mouth and tries to get it but it's like his tongue doesn't follow whatever it's all besides the fact that you know like just that is a hurdle in itself just not being able to talk i challenge anybody listening Put a piece of tape over your mouth. Try to go 24 hours without being able to talk. And you can't write anything down either because he doesn't write either. And see how hard it is to get through your day and how frustrated you are by the end of it without being able to communicate. And he's been dealing with that for 19 years now. He has a device, and we've been working on that for 10 or 15 years now. He doesn't seem to like to use it for some reason, but he does know how to use it, so you got to ask him, and he'll use it. That's helped immensely in the communication end of things which in turn has helped his aggression. So like when we, I was 19, 20 years old when we had the kid, Mo was 19. So we were kids. Yeah. You know, you can't go ask mom how she did it. Cause it's nothing like what you're going through. <laughs> the internet was barely around. I hate to sound old that, you know, we had a computer and stuff, but it wasn't like you could just get all the answers. You still can't get all the answers, but nowadays you can go on and, there's a lot more out there on autism than there was. I remember sitting in the room when they told us the diagnosis after we did the test. And both of us were just kind of like, yep, all right, cool. Now what? You know, what do we do now? Like, I don't think either of us realized what that really meant because it wasn't a thing back then. Not nearly as big of a thing back then. Now there's more stuff. There's TV shows. It's on the news. They talk about it. So that does bring a light to it. And people expect to... Uh, see that though like like when we right. take our son out to the grocery store and he is loud and vocal and flapping around because he's so excited it's an excited thing he's overstimulated because all the people and the lights and the noises all get to him that's what they need to kind of understand you get all the weird looks when you're out in public about that kind of stuff you know and it's because people aren't educated because i'm sure if they knew that he was special needs and had these problems, they probably wouldn't be staring. I don't know. Maybe some people would be. Oh, I, I think some people. At would. the end of the day, I think some people. It's would. just uh, education. We need more education out there on that subject. That it's not just all fun and games. When you go home, there's nobody else there to see yeah. what goes on inside them walls. And the last thing you want to be doing is going out and telling everybody about the bad stuff that's happening to you all the time. You just start to feel like a a Debbie Downer. When you're talking about the bad stuff all the time, too, so it yeah, can be but I but I think weird. it's important, like you said. I mean, in all honesty, as much as you've shared your challenges and and frustrations, whatever however you want to, uh, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. I mean, the reality is, like, I mean, you know, I, you got a you got a three or four year old kid. I mean, that's, it takes a lot of maintenance, but eventually they become, you know, a 13 year old kid with a crappy attitude that doesn't yeah. want to spend time with you. So there's <laughs> yeah. a little bit there's a little bit more independence, but. You know, the problem is when you have a student or well, I have a student, but when you have a child on the spectrum or any other special needs, it's not just autism. There's a whole range yeah. of them. They they're your full responsibility until the end of time. I mean, I remember doing social work and and offering respite services. And on some level, people would be like, oh, you know, why is the government got to pay for somebody to watch other people's kids? I'm like, because they have to watch them yeah. until they're adults. And you know what? On occasion, as a parent, you just need to be able to, to get out of the house and yeah. not stress out that something's happened to you your kid. It. Because even there, the system, I mean, if you don't have a powerful advocate and you're a nonverbal autistic kid, you're you're pardon my language, yeah. you're screwed. You are. I mean, you're talking probably getting physical abuse that'll never get reported, yeah. sexual abuse, all that kind of stuff. Because if the kid can't verbally express themselves there's all kinds of scumbags out of there, out there, world that, are out take, there. that are going to take advantage of that but again i think there's more decent people like you said at least with some of the awareness that's out there but i mean all that stuff has got to be bouncing around in your head all the time in terms of yeah. not just your kid but yeah. all these kids yeah it's a lot to think about and it can be very overwhelming at times for sure that's why you just got to take it day by day, man. Yeah. You know, and come, the older I get, the more I see that. If you start thinking too far ahead, like you said, he's my responsibility probably for the rest of my life. 
that can be a very overwhelming feeling when you think about that the rest of my life thing day by day it don't seem like it'll be so bad you know? I, I would say on the flip side you know it's it's i don't know man being a dad is such a cool thing awesome. even when your really kids is. are knucklehead sometimes yeah. or whatever like it's you said still... all kids kind of get that way anyway <laughs> yeah they do you know we can but... all get on each other's nerves that's what makes us human yeah um just in a different way for him is all and if you're a decent dad i mean you know unless your kids like adolf hitler or charles manson which i don't know if they actually I mean, maybe one of these days <laughs> hmm. i'll look into what their dads were like because my <laughs> god wonder. you know i'd just be like well you know adolf made some mistakes well, but... he probably had an amazing household yeah <laughs> who knows <laughs> D- this is this is how bizarre my mind works sometimes in in the big logic world so I, you know, the, one of the things that I found most disturbing was that Hitler had a dog. Like, he had a really cute dog. And he, and I remember seeing videos of him playing with the dog. And I was just thinking, how can you be, like, so loving to a dog like right. me, but yet... So hateful like, to a human being. Yes, but, like, a race so, of like, human like have literally no problem just uh, uh, issuing orders to exterminate mm. human beings. It just seems so contradictory. And, you know, everybody has their their different sides to them and... You know, I have people that, for instance, I've had very bad experiences with and, and I don't get along with. And yet other people always say, oh, my God, they're the sweetest person on <laughs> earth. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> well, how come they're such a dick to me? But, yeah, what did uh, I do to deserve that? <laughs> what did I do to deserve that? But I don't know. Well, I don't know where I'm going with that. But I, I, I uh, yes, Hitler, someday I'm going to have a whole episode. Hitler we got had way a dog, off back you know? there, way off base. <laughs> 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 but it is kind of weird to think about. I guess it is very weird yeah. to think about. So uh, talking a little bit about marriage and and uh, just partnership, we'll say, and I, I guess in, in many ways it is a marriage. Like you said, I think marriage in terms of a, a legal status is one thing. You, I mean, I actually my son had a couple of friends who recently got married. I think it was two years ago, and they did the whole thing online and everything like that. And then come to find out, there was no legal wedding service involved. That yeah. they were merely married in the eyes of each other. I thought. <laughs> yeah, I thought about doing that. Actually, I thought, how <laughs> sinful is that to our tax system? Yeah. My goodness, they found a loophole. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah. But you mentioned you you guys were were together in uh, you know you were you were twenty, she was nineteen. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, do you, I mean do you ever realize half of they, our lives ultimately we've been together. But what 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 strikes me is that the chances of a relationship at that age, starting at that age, and then throwing in a kid with special needs, the chances of that that relationship surviving yeah. for more than five years is almost non-existent. Yeah. I do believe the statistic for autism married couples is like fifty percent of them end in divorce or something like that. Well, Some even crazy even people like that, that that are married in in early twenties or or late right, teens, and then you I throw mean, that in there yeah. too. Yeah, I don't know. We don't think about how it worked, but it works, and it's pretty healthy for the most part. It's certainly not perfect. I don't believe any relationship is, and people are telling you it is perfect all the time, then they're probably lying. Uh, we have our moments, just like any couple. Uh, for the most part, as we get older, we've learned how to work those things out. You know, through life, we've learned together and learned that we're both forever changing, and that's probably just the way it's always going to be, and as long as we can be happy with each other, then... We're in. We're in for it. And I do believe Noah has helped. That's my son's name, Noah. He held us together through some tough times where if we didn't have him or if maybe he was normal, one of us probably would have split. But instead, we stayed. Thank God. Yeah. yeah here we are. I mean, what is normal, though? I guess that's... That's, that's yeah, I know, guess that is the a thing. I don't know. I mean, I'm not normal. Certainly. <laughs> I'm certainly not either. <laughs> <laughs> i've lived the uh, the farthest from normal life i feel like i guess normal for me when i say normal is like a like a nine to five job at the bank a white picket fence and a golden retriever and a cadillac in the driveway and i guess that's what i think of as normal which is the farthest thing from what i want to be so yeah. It's okay. <laughs> I'm okay with my abnormal life. It's been super abnormal. I've done a lot of things that I don't feel like a lot of people people have done, but it's been fun, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. Well, in, ter- in terms of the relationship, I know you talked about you came from a broken home. and We actually both did, ironically. Uh, yeah. So go figure there, because I know a lot of parents worry about breaking up and they don't want to set that so they stay together and they're freaking miserable for you 20 ha- or 30 years you have years. listened to the bagel logic podcast you know I mean? but <laughs> it's not good for the kids right hey 
uh, who's your who's your baby daddy that was one of my favorite episodes it was a good one i never yeah. knew you were a young a young father and I, yeah. that i related to a lot of the stuff you were talking about there you know it's uh it's tough being young and being a kid you know the things that i've learned about myself in 20 years are crazy just the way i think about things are not even close now to what they were then so uh it's it's kind of weird how you change as you go but well yeah i think totally I different th person now than i was then yeah but i mean <laughs> I you know, you know life no, life man. throws you so many curves man it's like it's weird because That's what it is. uh because you, you, you know, I, was, I was just writing a post on Facebook today about being a grandfather and thinking to myself, I didn't have any grandfathers growing up. Like I don't like I didn't have a model as a grandfather, right? And you really didn't have a model as a father with a child with special needs. Uh, so not at all. No. So you literally had to kind of figure it out. And you know, and I think on some level, that's okay. You know what I mean? It puts yeah. you in a it because. I don't know about you. I think you probably think a lot the same way that I do, uh, which is why you can relate to the podcast, which Absolutely. is why we get along, in that sometimes it's it's better to to have the circumstances and then be able to react to them and then find the solution that way than open up the manual and say, oh, you know, this is how it is, especially when it comes to parenting because – my God! You not know, all kids are the same, man. No, yeah, it's not a, it's not a, just a blueprint no. out there for that. No, Lee, Har Lee Harvey Oswald. I, I tell this story whenever I get to, you know, the Kennedy assassination in, in uh, high school. I said, you know, Lee Harvey Oswald had a pretty normal brother, <laughs> and they were both raised by the same parents. And Lee Harvey Oswald, whether you believe he was just a lone assassin or not, he was a nutty dude. Like, yeah, he was. I believe that. Like, I, like I, he was the, uh, <laughs> he was the forerunner to all conspiracy theorists ever. Like they should just have <laughs> just Lee, Lee Harvey. Oswald.com and everybody just goes there and you know I mean I mean even as a human being before he was part of all these conspiracy theories he was like the you know this 20 some odd year old pissed off this is what's going on in the world kind of guy but then he has this brother who's still alive completely level headed normal and you think to yourself well man like what what was it? Was it was it nature? Was it nurture? Was it the environment? Was it the circumstances? I a mean, little these, bit these, of all of it. I yeah, think. these kids are raised by the same yeah. parents, so it's like as much as. And I think that's the other problem is that you get to you know society now always. I mean, who's the first one they look at? Tops get shot up in Buffalo by a white supremacist. I, I don't know what your thought was. Even me, I'm the first one that said, man, this kid's got some fucked up parents. Yep. And it must be their fault on some level. Uh, maybe not. Yeah, maybe not parents, but definitely something fucked up happened to him in his life. And I haven't looked into it, so I have no idea what, like... The story was. Did you look in? Do you know what the story no, is on I, you know, his parents? You know what? I you know. I'll tell you. The, was the, he a the, foster kid? Or like, the there's only, lots of things. Maybe his parents were just fucked up and treated them like shit, and yeah, adopted that attitude. You know, they hate to say it like this, but they're your little brains to wash, however you see fit. And if it's not in a good way for some people, some parents just don't do good things with their little brains. That are theirs to wash. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, to the media's credit, and I hate to use the term the media because it's so broad. Mm. And uh, but you know what? At least in, in terms of coverage for this particular shooting, thankfully it has focused more on the victims than it has right. the, the perpetrators. For the so, first time in a long time, yes. I feel like too, yeah. which is so maybe I, a step in the right, right direction. Yeah. So I feel like that. I feel like everybody's kindly kind of figured that out. I mean, and that's that's good and that's bad because I think on it, on some level societally we need to figure out how people get that way. But that's, then again, yeah. if you turn them into celebrities, then you're just going to create copycats. So I'm I'm glad that you know it, it's it, I, there's another story I tell is that. When I was younger, there was this big thing with streaking. So, like, in the 70s, kids yeah. would run across yeah. college campuses naked. And the big thing was to uh, to streak in the middle of a Monday night football game. And that was, like, the ultimate prize for a streaker. Yeah. And so, sure enough, I remember growing up watching <laughs> Monday night football, and there'd be some naked dude or woman running across the field mid-game, and then, you know, tackle by security and all that yeah. stuff. And it was like, wow, you know? <laughs> so then at some point, somebody somebody got with it, got, they got together, and they go... Yeah, you know, why don't we just not show these guys on television and then maybe that'll <laughs> stop. stop. So then it was really funny. So it didn't stop for a while because it would be like, it'd be, I remember like, how would Co sell? You always talk like this. It's like, well, we had to cut away from the game because there is a young gentleman running across <laughs> the like field with impression. no no clothes on with his wanker <laughs> hanging out and swinging. <laughs> 
This is the most awful thing I've ever seen in my life, Al. <laughs> well, Howard, I agree with you. Well, so, as you know, it's ABC policy not to show streakers on on air. So <laughs> they but, spent but, ten minutes talking yeah, about it. Just, right. I mean, like you know, they talk about it. They'd be like, "Oh, that was a great tackle there." I'll tell you. you well, that's always the best part when they yeah. make contact and get them down. I guess. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know Bob Greasy could tackle like that. That was absolutely incredible. Oh my God, his butt is in his face though. <laughs> Ooh, he shouldn't have taken his helmet off. People but, need to lighten up a little at the end of the day. But but that's but you know the fact that they didn't give any any credence or any airtime for to these yahoos, it eventually stopped. And I mean I don't think it's that simple in terms of uh, you know stopping somebody from doing a, a crime based on their beliefs of white supremacy and no, replacement no. theory anything there like that. But it, but no again I was just that. very I was very happy that they didn't give the the kid so much notoriety yeah but i again i i mean i think i'm pretty normal that, uh, that i always go there mentally i mean even though i know that i should i mean that's why i go oh, it's got to be the fucking parents you know they're, they're just absolutely awful you know well i think that comes from trying so hard as a parent maybe to make sure that your kids didn't turn out that way i don't know if you did but i know it's like you try yeah. your i don't know you try your hardest if you're a good person to instill them good values in your kids as they grow and you hope that they don't turn out crazy enough to shoot a place up yeah. I would just hope my kid would just, you know, if he had to do something crazy, maybe streak across the field. Big deal. Yeah, just, well, Howard Cosell's not alive Just anymore. a little it's bit of not, dick and not balls. Not as much fun. <laughs> it's definitely all, not as much fun as it used to be. We all got them, and what's the big deal? Yeah. You know, there's a certain <laughs> level of weird maybe we should just let fly, and we won't have these other problems. There yeah. goes Noah running across <laughs> the field. Well, he's a bit of a streaker. He's not a huge yeah. fan of closed, so that's been a fight yeah. our whole lives, too, to keep them on him. So it's happened. Uh, just... Last year, we were camping. Uh, I'm not going to mention the campsite because we might never get let back again, but we've got a bus that we camp in that we've built up to uh, drive around or whatever, so he's got his comfortable space to sit in, and uh, me and Mom take a walk down to the lake, and uh, we come back, and Noah's standing, door open, dick out, (laughs) pissing right out the window, or, or pissing right out the door, gets done, turns around, walks back in the bus, he's He's done, but who knows who was watching? It's happened a few times. He just whips it out. He don't care. That's one of his best property or his best personality traits. He really could care less what you think or I think about him. He's gonna do what he wants. It's it reminds me of that scene in Big Daddy where yeah. the kid takes yeah. a leak He's on like, the side ah, just of the go bed. ahead. <laughs> At least he got permission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all fun and games until until the kid's seventeen or eighteen and he's. He's got hair down there, and everybody knows he's not a little kid, and then things get more serious, I feel like. Luckily, nobody saw, and if they did, they didn't say anything. But, you know, that could it could be lewd conduct or something. I don't know what the freaking ticket is for it. That's, well, you know what? Indecent I, I, exposure. I actually know, one. because I, I have received the ticket for that. <laughs> You know, this has not been. This is the first time ever on the Bag of Logic podcast. Yeah. So it's know. really not that weird. Cause... It's no, it's it's called disorderly conduct. <laughs> it's what it is. It's, it's, a... it's like disorderly conduct is sort of uh, well, you know, in, in the. In I the... thought that was when you were like drunk in public or something. Yeah, it is. Dis- yeah. See, disorderly conduct. You know, like I told you, I work with with kids with uh, special needs. Mm-hmm. So there's there's like all these different diagnoses that you have, but then eventually you kind of run out of it and you just, it's like where you all sit around and you scratch your head and be like, well, I don't know. It's gotta be something. So then they, they came up with this thing called ODD, which is an oppositional defiant disorder. Yes, I've heard of this one. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, you don't like authority figures. It's like, and I was, I was, I'm like, what? Uh, whatever. But it's like that one category where they're like, you know, everybody's scratching. Like, well, we gotta, I mean, dude just whipped his dick out. He just pissed in public. So we gotta <laughs> yeah, we charge gotta him with something. something there. Is there a specific charge? Well, he's, he's conducting himself and it's, uh, it's not very orderly, so uh, disorderly conduct. And I mean, two hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I got one of those for peeing in public, and uh, a friend of mine actually peed in somebody's vehicle. But I peed. Thankfully, I didn't pee in the vehicle because I think he had received a second charge of disorderly conduct and just being an Destruction idiot. Destruction of property. Yeah, we were like, I was like fourteen or fifteen, so it's been expunged from my criminal record. Can you imagine that? You know, that if, I, if I ever again. ran for office again someday, and to be like. <laughs> Tom Jennings urinated in public, they didn't and now dig he that wants one up. to be your governor. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'd hire you. That's normal stuff. You know? We've all peed in public. Some of yeah. us have only gotten caught. I, oh my god! So, <laughs> so here's another pee in public story. Because 
Tra- see, my wife gets really mad. And thank God she doesn't listen to this podcast. But uh, <laughs> she yells at me all the time because I pee outside. And I love to pee outside. Oh, so it's free. I'll like pull into driveway. I'll take a leak. And I mean, even before in our old house, which the bathroom was on the same floor. But here it's on the second floor. So I pretend that that's yeah. my excuse. But I don't want to run up the stairs. I can't oh, run up the stairs. Man. That's what I tell her. I just can't. I don't want to dribble or anything. I don't know Getting what old, it is. Honey. Peeing outside to me is one of the one of the comforts in life that I just absolutely love. So one, one night I was going to my mom's apartment in, in Brighton, which is a suburb outside of rochester kind of highfalutin but it was her apartment complex and her, know, na- and her neighbor hated her like her upstairs neighbor <laughs> or, or no it was the downstairs neighbor she was upstairs so so i took a leak and in the parking lot and then after i parked and went upstairs and then this guy had like a session with my mother about all these things he was complaining about her and he took photographs of the of the pee the stain puddle? <laughs> yeah, and he presented it at this meeting with the with the the landlord and the landlord man i'll never forget the guy he says Come on, man. Who hasn't taken a leak in public at least once in their life? Like he, he's like, <laughs> just, the way he said it too is like, come on, man. Come on, you know. Like good if this, is, like if this humans. is the worst thing you can come up with against this kid, get know, alive. Yeah, get alive. <laughs> Dom Jennings pees in public. Now he wants to be your president. So yes, so yeah, that's man. my. You gotta uh, be careful if you're gonna have a life in politics. Look at all this garbage of mine that you've dug up now Got for my it. opponents. Who's interviewing who here? <laughs> 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 I've peed in public. I told you a bunch of times, but I've never been caught. So technically, there's no record. So, but well, you don't gotta worry. I'm not. But you've just confessed. No life in no some, life in politics for me. I promise. Yeah. yeah. No, I. I, uh, I <laughs> actually... Super rock and roll to pee in public. <laughs> I actually discussed it with my wife the other day. I said, uh, "I said, you know, I'm thinking about deregistering my political affiliation, so I'm just a, a, a normal, you know, like they call it a blank." Yeah, what does that do for you? I don't know. Like, well, you just can't vote in the primaries, but it doesn't doesn't make you affiliate with right. one party or the other. I said because I'm thinking maybe someday I want to run for either school board or town board. And she just gave me my now my wife has never said the F word, but man, she gave me that look like no fucking way. <laughs> That's a good, you're ever doing that again. It's like not while I'm alive. That's a good sign that you probably shouldn't do it, I've learned. That's so my, as I've gotten older, when the wife <laughs> when the wife gives you that look, you know, because I've tried some shit in my day too. You talk about starting businesses. I've tried it all, I feel like barbecue and ran a campground where we did music festivals for a couple of years and there's been a million things, all the jobs, but you can tell. What's you, you, you guys are doing a what is it it's like uh candles or what's the yeah yeah we've been doing that it's our new little adventure our new business adventure and there was nobody to tell us because she wanted to do it and i was like okay let's do it so she couldn't give me the look and here we are starting a business selling beauty products and candles and everything made out of beeswax three beeswax.com check it out if you if you get a chance Let's say but, that yeah. again three beeswax.com there we go we're gonna put a link in the show notes folks yeah, you can put go that ahead. down there in the in the little comments or whatever i think they say so how did you wind up getting into into that especially <laughs> beeswax uh, i think mo loves candles and we're poor well i probably shouldn't have said that on radio she hates it when i point that out but when you don't have time to go to work because you got a special needs kid that you got to take care of basically it makes it hard to make money second reason why we started this was because it's something we can do from home and we can do it together so that's always good because we like to be together. I mentioned that in the beginning of the show, too. But uh, the candles are what started it. So if she makes her own. It's a lot cheaper, right? So <laughs> it's my, my cheap ass got her to make her own candles instead of buying them because we couldn't afford to buy them. It loves the way they burn. So then we start looking up stuff on beeswax. And there's just like a zillion things you can make out of beeswax or that have beeswax in it. And then it's just got the ball rolling, man. And, you know, just like with the bagel thing, you think kind of like the... I do believe, if I'm correct, yours kind of just started like you wanted a bagel that tasted like a freaking bagel, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now that I've had your bagels, I understand what you're talking about because your bagels definitely don't taste like anything from the store, even the fresh ones. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you got to get them good bagels now. It's like you're spoiled. I was out in Brighton for the doctor. I was telling you this the other day, and I almost went to Bagel Land. You almost got them business. I've never heard of Bagel Land in my life. It's greatest land I ever. Greatest land ever. It was like noon, yeah. and yeah. the Google said it was super busy over there, so I didn't. Yeah. yeah, I'm not good around traffic and people and all that stuff gets me worked up. So yeah, no, I, I well, I, <laughs> I, and I, I think that's part of living in a rural area too. I mean, let's face it. I love it. I, I love I, that uh, part of living yeah. out here. It's yeah. great. I, I'm I've I was uh, when I grew up in near Rochester, I was kind of used to traffic. But once mm. I lived in in Albion for a few years, I became very traffic sensitive. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I just the only thing 
The only traffic that pisses me off out here is getting stuck behind a combine. Yeah, tractor, I was yeah, just going to say. I'm just like, oh, Or an Amish man. horse and buggy out my way. I'm a little farther north, so we get the Amish out that way. Yeah, see, I'll just run them over because they don't have phones to call the police <laughs> anyway. You know what I mean? You rotten bastard. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a joke, folks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would never, would never hit an Amish person with my car. Not on purpose. And admit it on air. Yeah. So <laughs> that's, they actually, they actually that's did, a very politician thing of you to do. Yeah. Well, they actually did. They did. The Amish did my gutters. And uh, yeah, they were. It was really funny because because the guy, you know, a guy calls me up and then we, we set up at a time. And then one day he just calls me. It's like, yeah, we're going to do, do your gutters this afternoon. I'm like, oh, cool. Do you need a deposit? He's like, no, nah, we'll just leave a bill. I'm like, holy crap, man. These people are super trustworthy. Yeah, they are. We paid them. But, you know, yeah. it was just, I was, it was in some ways, it was very refreshing to have somebody that just was like. It's old school, yeah. It's faith, you know. A little and, handshake deal. Yeah. So That's... what's been your biggest uh, your biggest issue in terms of, like, your your beeswax Boy. business? Because, man, yeah. I got I yeah. got a gazillion that drive me nuts. With Small business thing. is not the easy way to go. But it no. is. Uh, so maybe going to punch a clock is where it's at uh, as far as money. But as far as fulfillment and feeling good about what you did at the end of the day, even if it is a 15-hour day <laughs> instead of an eight-hour yeah. day, is the best part. But the, the hurdles is money. And at the end of the day, when you don't have a lot of money to get things going and you're just working off of the little bit of money that you got, it can be really tough to build up stock and just to do everything properly. Is New York State's a stickler on having all your ducks in a row, taxes and all this crap that you got to deal with, business licenses and for you it's food so it's even harder you got to have a kitchen to properly set up to do it in and all the certificates to sell for it at the markets that you go to and i think the the red tape i don't know the the bureaucratic shit is the hardest part like if they would just let me make the stuff and sell it then it would be great it would be easy enough but it's really not that simple you're gonna have all the stuff to do it so oh, <laughs> it all costs God. money <laughs> yeah no it's it's nuts and I'm, I'm constantly getting in some kind of weird trouble like i'll just get some notice in the mail that i didn't do something yeah I you didn't remember or, yeah. yeah it's like well how am i supposed to remember all this and if it's a small business you're still working another job on the side and you have your stuff like for me it's music for you it's podcasts uh and then you have your small business that you're trying to build up to and it would be nice if it was just an overnight thing and that's how it happened overnight success you know you put your money you put your 10 grand in and boom it's going and it's making you money that's not how it works you put 10 grand in and that wasn't enough so now you gotta put another five in then you finally start making some money back and then that's all gotta go in i think the easiest thing for me has been just not to keep track of the hours don't keep track of the hours that you're working don't pay attention to that because <laughs> You don't want to know how much you're getting paid, especially in this in this uh, part of it, you know. And I'm yeah. sure anything worth having is worth working for. And I'm hoping we're going to get there. Just got to keep plugging away. I know I saw you guys just had a bunch of problems that oh my with God. your kitchen yeah. and stuff. Being able to, if you could have just quit, sure you could have just stopped doing it and been done. But those are the things you got to fight through, and eventually. It's all going to pay off. That's, you got to keep telling yourself that and open for the best, you know? Yeah, I don't know. You know, it, it's, it, and you mentioned the fact that you've had a lot of different business ventures that have, that, you know, looked at, that had good prospects. It's kind of like. Well, you think they're all going to work in the beginning. Yeah, I think they're all going to work in the beginning and then they kind of, <laughs> you know, something happens or, you know, to me, to me, look, the, one of the biggest, the, the difficult part is uh, separating business savvy in terms of relationships versus um, business relationships. You know what I mean? Like you almost never want to do business with your friend because it, be tough. it just creates problems. It certainly you know? can. And yeah. destroys friendships. And it can I mean, be I'd... hard when you're in a business with your significant other as well. I know we talked about that on your second, <laughs> yeah, your yeah. second podcast. Know, I, I've there. been lucky in that respect and that we really, you know, we've, we've, we've had a couple of uh, minor squabbles in terms of, of things and no I mean, bickering and no a little bit of bickering, right. you know, well, I but, think, yeah. you know, that's normal. But I think that that's, uh, I mean, I could see why a husband and wife would not want to go into business together because it, it can. But I feel like if your if your relationship has a strong enough foundation, you can pull it off. But you really got to go into this thing. But it's the same with parenting. You know, yes. you're, you're dealing with. So now my wife, when we got married, she had to deal with my young my kids that were still, you know, they were older, but they were still somebody else's kids. Yeah. So that's sort of part of the deal there. And then like a business becomes a kid. So obviously you you probably have arguments in terms of. 
hey, man, this is what we should do with Noah. And she says, no, that's not what we should do. We should do yeah. this. But at some point, you got to figure out how to do that. But then when it comes to business relationships, especially when you got money involved, if somebody tries to take advantage of your suckerness because you like people and you like to, right. to they'll they'll get deals or do all this other stuff but eventually it just not only breeds resentment but causes causes problems yeah. you know like i tell you the guy that uh, the one kitchen you mentioned and we we were working out of there i mean he was he was our best friend in the world when nobody else wanted to use the kitchen but Until somebody he else wasn't, yeah. Right? yeah and then all of a sudden something else came along and he i think there was a, a balance between his volunteer board and um, and us, and it, obviously, I, I remember telling Trace, I go, he ain't gonna, he's gonna side with his volunteers because they're the ones that that keep him in his job. Like it's politics, what, what the hell do we need? <laughs> it's the politics of, of the situation. Yeah, but you always hope people are gonna stand up for situations yep. that they see are wrong. You know, somebody like we had, we had somebody coming to Meadworks once, started telling a bunch of black jokes. And I remember uh, the owner was there, Brian, at the time, and I was there, and I just said to the guy, I'm like, yeah, you can't do that, man. Wrong I'm like, place, just man. don't do that. And yep. he's like, well, I heard from black guy. I'm like, I don't really care. He's just uh, like, I don't want to hear it. And then he, that's that rural, <laughs> that rural area we live in. Well, coming. I, don't, I don't think he was from the area. And uh, even worse, then the uh, then the then he told a Jewish joke, and I just looked at him. I'm like, oh my god, man! Like what? Like did you not understand the whole original part of the conversation? But <laughs> apparently <know>. not. <laughs> apparently yeah. not at all. Yeah, but a bit of a bit of a money trail there. But you know what I mean. I mean, he yeah. said when you're dealing with business, and then and then that's the other thing. You know, going back to compromising your morals. I mean, doing business with people that on a personal level you don't particularly like mm -hmm. but there's an advantage of like do you sh to me like do you shop at walmart because you're you can only afford to shop at walmart but then you realize that you're supporting walmart instead of supporting a local business when you own a local business right uh half the yeah. shop at walmart my local business doesn't pay very well we just talked about that yeah, but that's that's <laughs> till it saying. gets off the till it gets yeah. off the ground i'm just gonna have to keep doing what i have to do but it's certainly if i had a choice I feel like I would always buy from small local businesses, but it's hundred percent. It's tough. Yeah, it's tough to always do that. So as much as I can, I try to, and I love to see people putting the effort forth to open small businesses, like friends and family, and just feel like it's a more fulfilling life. And you can have. I used to say, well, if you got your own business, you don't got to worry about the rug getting pulled out from under you out of nowhere. You know, like someday you could come and do your factory job and the doors could be locked. They sold the business. They don't care about you. You're just another number. Then COVID hit. Yeah. Kind of threw that all up out of nowhere because no matter how hard you work or whatever, that kind of got pulled right out from under a lot of small businesses. Just one day, boom, you're done. Can't can't stay open. It's against the law. So that's tough. There is factors out there that at play that maybe can wipe you out in a second without you even having a choice, no matter how hard you worked. Yeah, so. or I mean, even something as simple as an accident that uh, that too. Yeah, you just can't work anymore. Mm -hmm. Makes it tough. Well, I have to wrap this up because we have another Josh that I'm going to be talking way to. more popular. Josh one. Groban. I don't know what he's. <laughs> yeah. He's certainly not more popular in Medina because you had no clue the heck he was. <laughs> I didn't. I still don't. I thought he was on. I thought he was a. a, 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 a contestant on the freaking american idol or one of them shows yeah but. he may have been at some point <laughs> <laughs> this was a young kid no I, I, I man i wish i was gonna look it up his name must be close or something yeah yeah you know, I'm, he's, I'll he's, send not, it to he's you not later. in sticks so no. we'll, we'll come full circle <laughs> but uh josh i want to thank you i know we'll definitely do this again and yeah, uh, i thought some great stuff it, and i you know I, I love the i love the candid nature of uh this discussion in terms of you know your son and your yeah, relationships man. and all that stuff and that's kind of what we're going for on this podcast so uh one and, of my I, faults. and i appreciate you listening too Wait, to i i uh it's entertaining man i'm not even doing it because i love you and i think you're a good guy it's it's totally entertaining and that's why i listen to it well i appreciate it. Well, i hope everybody enjoyed this particular episode don't forget to share it rate it and of course uh if it's if it's really good you know meet you and i could just start to the moon. podcast and <laughs> i can't wait we can quit all of our other freaking yeah. jobs everybody and listen more everybody listen and uh <laughs> we'll get back to you all right awesome we'll see you next time on the bagel logic podcast <laughs>